guys welcome back to my channel it's a girl i mean they here just in case you're seeing my face for the first time you're welcome to join us oh you guys you already know here that um mr jonah peterson is one man that i respect a lot i love like i love how his mind works if you've watched him for a while you understand that like he's very very articulate and very wise the most thing i love about him is how he's not quick respond i don't know if you guys have noticed that about him you will ask mr peterson a question he takes a moment to dilute the question before he answers i love that about him like guys oh well so let's check out this video it says that dr jordan peterson reviews his solution to motivate generation z guys i i truly wish this is something that people will even emulate because gen z the way they are headed I'm just like I, I truly feel for the generation they are going to raise, guys. Mm, 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 mm. But let's check out the video, guys, and hear what he's, he's got to say. You're gonna love this. I recently sat down with world-renowned psychologist and author Dr. Jordan Peterson. We talked about a number of things, including education versus indoctrination, and his mission to fight the far-left woke agenda in schools, maybe your school as well as why Gen Z's can't cut it in the workforce. Not all of you, but some of you, and how we can help them. You got a new study showing new 2023 hires are unprepared for work, they're unprepared for life. Dr. Peterson's take on all of this, especially for parents, is fascinating. Watch. When this study popped up, we thought, you got to weigh in on this. They say that Gen Z's come in, they're sincere, but if they have no necessary instinct on what to do next, find them a lot sitting idly by waiting for instructions on what to do next. Does that make sense to you? Something about this generation that would have trouble being self-motivated? Well, I think that if you set up an education system that's designed to do nothing but demoralize young people and to convince them that their ambition is dangerous and, well, even world-threatening for that matter, a manifestation of patriarchal oppression, on the social front, and then a danger to the survival of the planet on the natural front, then, and you don't do anything to foster that ambition and to channel it into a manner that might be productive and to tell young people why their ambition might be useful, then you're going to get exactly that. So you hit what you aim at if you try hard enough, and the education system has been trying to demoralize people for 60 years. One of, the, one of the things that really stuns me, you know, I haven't been able to figure this out yet. I've been trying to talk to Republican governors about this. I cannot understand why conservatives have been daft enough to allow the faculties of, edu of education to retain their hammerlock on teacher certification for the last 60 years. It's insane. You mean I, the criteria to get the certification and what's exactly. in it? You have to be trained in a faculty of education to become a teacher. Why? They're the most woke element of the entire rotten university carcass. And they have the hammerlock on 50% of the state budgets. You know, the conservatives are always complaining about the culture war. It's like, well, you handed all the young people to the faculties of education, right? Their research is terrible. It's low rate. Their students are generally uh, very uh, incompetent, comparatively speaking, on the academic front, you know. It's foolish, it, and this is the outcome. It's not surprising. And it's a way to, to work on the foundation. And when you have an RNC chair or a DNC chair, if you have an agenda, that's what to work on. Don't get Mr. and Mrs. Uh, uh, candidate elected. Start focusing on, on the direction you want the country in and find out how to, um, how to give people an education that will allow them to at the very least think, but not what to think. Well, the left-wingers in the 1960s were far-seeing enough, the more radical types, to envision a decades-long march through the institutions, right? And one of their goals was the capture of educational institutions, and that's happened completely, and that's been absolutely abetted by conservatives who tend to get lost in the details. And, right. um, well, then, you think, now you have young people who are demoralized and directionless, future authoring. We did a study where we had three studies actually where we had university students sit down essentially for 90 minutes. Right. 90 minutes. This was it. And write out a goal, a series of goals for their life, right? Who could they be in five years across seven important dimensions of their life? And where might they be that would be terrible if they didn't get their act together? We dropped their dropout rate 50% and raised their grade point average 30 
by 35%, three separate studies. So that's all you have to do if you want to motivate young people is to teach them a bit of visionary discipline and encourage it. And we do the opposite of that. Plus, we terrify them, trigger warnings. We tell them that everything's dangerous. You talked about accommodation. So someone has uh, ADD, they're told, they're, yeah. uh, dyslexia or other things. Yeah. In the public school now, there's a lot of accommodations. Give me, give me, I'm going to give you more time for your test yeah. or things to that nature. I have trouble tracking across the line. You think accommodations in many cases don't show progress, can, can be limiting. Why? Well, the problem with the accommodation hypothesis is something like the advantage is, well, you want to do what you can to help people who might have obstacles that could be overcome to learn. That's not unreasonable. But the problem with the accommodation hypothesis is, well, what happens when you have an actual problem to solve? You're not going to be accommodated. You're not going to be accommodated in a workforce that requires genuine competition. Because if you're accommodated in a workforce that requires genuine competition, you're just going to be taken out. There's no time for that. Right. And you might say, well, there should always be time. It's like, well, not if there are important things Life's at stake. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it's, there's going to, you, that's foolish, right? Because when you're making important decisions, you're always balancing one catastrophe against another. You don't have the option that everything's going to turn out. And so the problem with accommodation, well, first of all, it's going to be gamed, and it's being gamed like mad. And second, it gives the person who's being accommodated to the wrong picture of the world to which they're going to adapt. You think about this with parenthood. It's how should you treat your kids? Well, as a mother and father, you should be a proxy for the world. Maybe a slightly more merciful proxy, but basically the message you send your kids about their behavior is the same message that the world is going to send them, should be, because otherwise you're not preparing them for the world. You know, so maybe your kid's annoying as hell to you and your wife, and you don't do anything about it because you think, well, we're all mercy. It's like, that's just fine until your kid has to make a friend or, you know, deal with an adult that's not you, in which case they're going to get slaughtered. There's nothing merciful about that. And if you accommodate people beyond what the environment itself would allow, you, right. get, you misinform them about the, the world they're going to inhabit. And plus, it can be gamed, and it's being gamed constantly. Online school, you and your daughter yeah. working together. Yeah. What do we know, and how do we get it? Well, we've got about 30 courses recorded so far in a studio in Miami. Um, they look very good. They're very professionally produced. We are trying to find the best lecturers in the world. So if you think you're a good lecturer and you want to participate, give that some thought. That's Peterson Academy. We hope we'll be ready to roll in November. We want to make sure that we have the best lectures that we can possibly provide on the most germane topics. And then we're going to ally that with a very stringent testing and accrediting system so that if you are a graduate of this particular institution, the people who hire you will know that you learned what you were aiming at learning and that you did the proper work. And that's extraordinarily important because employers need to know that. They Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson, I know you had a few hurdles to clear to get here. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I know our audience does. Best success uh, coming your direction. And well, if you want to go see you in person, just go to jordanbpeterson.com. Jordan Dr. Yeah. Peterson, thanks so much. Hey, you bet. Great to see you, sir. Thanks for the invitation. All right. Pretty cool, right? Don't miss the second part of my interview with Dr. Jordan Peterson. Next week on One Nation, we discuss the key to happiness. If you have a goal and you see yourself taking steps towards it, that is what produces positive emotion and positive motivation, that enthusiastic desire to get up and go. And it also stops anxiety. All right. Uh, you are going to love this interview. Hey, quick note. Be sure to order my soon-to-be release book, Teddy and Booker T. You'll absolutely love it. It talks about where we were with race, what these two men to move our, did to move our country forward. Hey. Guys, to be frank, ah. Oh. We need more people like Mr. Peterson, like, so, so, this day and time, like, common sense is so rare. You know, when, people say, when, when, when I started hearing the phrase that common sense is not common, guys, it's in this era that I'm beginning to realize that statement that is true. Common sense, guys, in this era is no longer common at all. To think that people that are even going to school, have you guys seen the video where they're asking students, university students, so question like common question that the answers it will blow your mind away like I'm I'm I've been asking like why are they in school?
why are you spending so much amount of money in school when you don't even the common sense is not common to you like ah oh. education does no longer equal intelligence guys in it's so let me just read out this comment this comment for me just <laughs> is so true it says um if my parents caught me sitting around doing nothing they would give me a job to do if i ever said i'm bored they made sure i had twice as much to do if i complained i couldn't do it they showed me how and made sure i did it hmm. Hmm. parents teach their kids how to think work hard and accomplish things that successfully and develop self-respect and perseverance my parents also made sure our local school at the end of our street had teachers that did the same it's not so difficult it used to be normal guys this has this these were normal things that a few years ago we were normal parents had teachers accountable teachers also had parents accountable like it was it was a, a, a job that they were teachers and parents were done un, like un, in done in unity do you get everybody did their part and when the children come together like you know it was a student assisted degree thing teachers were doing their part parents were doing their own part so the, all the hands were on deck i don't know if you guys if i'm even making any sense but guys like growing up with my mom there was never a time for me to sit idle. I used to even like it was a, it, it's a joke here in Nigeria that we crack in Nigeria. We pray. Parents will, will always manufacture a job out of no out of nowhere. Like parents will manufacture chores out of nowhere because you must not be caught sitting idle. Like 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 there was never a time where you sit down until it's time for you to go to bed, guys. <laughs> so you know when seriously when I. When I started hearing people talking about depression, like even like my sister, we used to crack jokes. Ah, depression, that's for idle people. Like, that's what me and my sister used to like. You can't be in Nigeria, you're crying of depression. Like, that means you, know, you are idle. Seriously, that's what we used to say. Like, depression. The way you used to make one, I said, that's for, that's for rich people that don't have what to do. Like, that's why you'll be idle you're idle because i don't know there's a way you'll be busy that you, you will never know what depression is like. what is depression are you telling me that you are that idle that i'm not making fun of i know that some persons are truly depressed but this, now it's as it become it's, it has become a term that is used so loosely that you don't even know who is truly depressed or not any little thing oh i'm depressed i'm so depressed like come on the word for me that word has even lost its power. It doesn't even truthfully. Well, but let me know your thoughts are in the comment section, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and take care of yourself. Be you, do you, but do not conform and be happy. Bye guys.